Hey everyone, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel for another Trinity Stamps video. I'm going to be creating a storybook card today, which basically means that it's going to look like a page of a storybook. I'm going to be using watercolors. It's just going to look very picturesque, simple, but beautiful. And for that, I'm using the Joy Noel stamp set. For my watercoloring, I'm going to be using one of my favorite watercolor palettes that I own, and it is the Koi Watercolors Pocket Field Sketchbox palette. You can see it is very well loved. This particular palette has 24 colors in it, and it just comes with that little mixing plate, and I love how everything is just nice and compact and simple. It's one of my favorite watercolor palettes that I own, and I use it anytime I get the chance. For my watercolor cardstock, I'm using a four and a quarter by five and a half, and I'm going to adhere it with painter's tape all around the edges to a piece of cardboard. This will make it so that I can pick it up and swoosh, swoosh the colors around. Um, and I'm also going to be using the moon from the silhouette stamp set in the top left hand corner of my cardstock. So I want to make sure that when I am doing the watercolor, I keep that area a little bit brighter because that's where my moon is going to go. So to go ahead and get started, what I'm going to do is make this blue sky color. To activate the watercolors, I take my Distress Sprayer and just spray water all over the watercolor palette. And just off camera, I have two cups of water. One will remain clean water and the other will be the water that I mix the colors or get the colors off of the paintbrush with. You can see there in that middle well, I've got a blue color and that is actually dried on there. But once I start putting water in it and then mixing other watercolors with it, it will reactivate it. So I like to keep that in there just for an idea of the color that I want. Normally when I use blue, I'm doing skies or something of the sort. So I like to just add to that blue. Now that I've got the color mixed to where I think I would like it, I'm going to take some clean water and put it all over my cardstock. This will make it so that when I'm ready to put the watercolor onto the cardstock, which now I need to do fairly quickly because obviously it will dry, but when I put the watercolor onto the cardstock, it will feather out a bit rather than just soak right into the cardstock. You can see that happening a little bit here, but honestly, I didn't put enough water onto the cardstock. I don't want to ever oversaturate it, but I definitely undersaturated it this time. I decided that I definitely needed a little bit of a deeper blue, so I just mixed one of the colors in with that blue color that I've created. And if at any time I need it to be a little lighter, I can just add more water to it, clean water. And that will help it become a lighter color blue, which is really cool the way that watercolor works. But if you're familiar with acrylics rather than watercolor, it can definitely take a little bit of a learning curve. I want to be able to move it around, like I said, so I went ahead with my distress sprayer and sprayed some more water onto the cardstock. At this point, I'm not worried about it being oversaturated because I've decided I really want this to be sort of a very swirly watercolor look. So I'm going to go ahead and just dry that off with my heat gun after I'm done swooshing it all around and making sure it's at all corners. And I'm going to put some more watercolor over the dried watercolor. Now this will reactivate that under color a bit, but not enough to where it will completely dissipate. So I just make sure that I dry that completely and then I put my second layer on top of that first layer. Again, I'm making sure that I keep that top left hand corner a little bit lighter. And by doing that, all I need to do is add a little bit more water and just create this sort of circular pattern where the moon's going to go. I add a bit more dark blue to the very edges just to make it look as if it's getting darker as you come out from the moon. And then I hit it with my heat gun and carefully pull back the painter's tape. And the best way to do this is just to pull it back onto itself um, and just make sure that you sop up any of those wet spots because that can tear the paper with the uh, painter's tape. To give the card a bit more interest, I'm going to cut it out using a stitched rectangle die and I just make sure that I try as hard as I can to get this perfectly centered so that when I pull it off there's no wet spots, I'm sorry, white spots. But if there are any white areas sort of on the edge, you can just go back in with that blue color again and cover it up. 
For this snow splatter, I'm using an acrylic paint with water in it, and then I just sort of hit it onto my finger and spray it all over the card front. I'm going to work on my deer image now. I'm going to put that in my mini misty so that I can re-stamp it later. So I ink it up with Memento Tuxedo Black ink because I am going to be doing some Copic coloring and I do not remove the stamp from the mini misty. I go ahead and Copic color my deer. I'm also going to be Copic coloring a star from the set as well, but I don't show too much of it. Honestly, I cover the image quite a bit with my hand and I wanted this to be more about the watercolor scene anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip over that. If you are interested in the colors that I use, they are in the description. Because I didn't take that stamp off of the Mini Misty, I'm able to put it back in and stamp over it again. This is one of my favorite techniques that I've learned for Copic coloring. I think that it just comes all together when you re-stamp it again. It looks nice and crisp and clean, and I like the way it looks when you re-stamp it. I'm going to use the coordinating dies and cut that out so that I can put it onto my card front when I'm ready with some foam tape. To create the snowbank, I'm just going to use a piece of cardstock cut to the same size, and I'm going to use an X-Acto knife just to cut out this snowbank. Once I do that, I realize that I really want it to have that stitched look as well so that it's all cohesive on the card front. So I just put that through with the same, same stitched rectangle die through my die cutting machine, and it comes out wonderfully. I go ahead and put some Tombow Mono Multi Glue onto the back of that snowbank and adhere it to my scene. And now I'm going to use that moon, that silhouette moon, and I'm going to prep my cardstock there in the top left hand corner with a powder tool. I'm going to stamp it in Versamark ink, and then I'm going to put two layers of embossing powder over it. And this will just make sure that it's really bright white and that it's very visible. I was a little afraid that you wouldn't be able to see the white, so I did sort of flirt with the idea of putting a yellow moon, but I really wanted it to match the snow below. So I went with white, and I'm glad that I did. I like the way it turned out. That deer is not adhered yet. I'm just sort of figuring out where I want everything. This star is also from the Joy Noel set, and I'm going to make it look like the deer is basically touching the star with the very tip of his nose. So now that I know exactly where I'd like it, I'm going to give the snowbank a little more depth and interest. And to do that, I'm going to use B00 just to add some slopes. BG10 just to blend that out a bit so that it's not so harsh, the blue. And then I'm going to take my colorless blender and go over the entire snowbank and just make sure that I blend that color out. I really love doing this to snow when I'm trying to give it a little bit more depth. It makes it look not so flat. And I just like the way that it looks when those colors together make the indentations in the snow. I've decided that my sentiments will be at the bottom of the card front because that's where I would sort of assume to see um, a storybook writing in a picture book. So the sentiments come in two different strips of sentiment and they go together. So I'm going to stamp the bottom sentiment first and then the top sentiment just to make sure I can get them all straight and perfectly spaced out. And I use Juniper Mist by Katherine Pooler, which is a really deep blue to stamp it and it comes out wonderfully. To adhere the deer, I'm going to use some foam tape, so I just go ahead and cut tiny little pieces off of a larger cut piece of foam tape to adhere the deer and the star to the card front. The star also has a stamp that sort of makes it look like it's gleaming or shining, so I go ahead and use those in VersaFine Onyx Black ink, and then I go ahead and supplement some of the snow with a white gel pen. With foam tape, I adhere it to an A2 size card base, and then I am finished. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you have enjoyed the video. As always, links to all of the supplies and the Trinity Stamps shop are in the description. Thank you again for stopping by, and I will see you very soon. Thanks. Bye.